So let's get started. Uh, this talk is entitled Soylent Bits, Your Code is Made of People, the Story of a Shit API and an Aubergine. Hi. My name is Miles. Um, I'm the alpha nerd on Twitter. Feel free to follow me, that's cool. Um, I currently work at a small disruptive startup called IBM. I'm contributing to a small open source project called Node.js. Um, it is just worth mentioning before we get started that this talk does not represent the opinions of my employer. This is all my own rage. Before we get started, a warning. Uh, this is actually really serious. I'm going to take this seriously. It's a trigger warning. Um, this talk is going to involve mentions of suicide, trolling, harassment, misogyny, and racism. If you find these triggering, I want to give you an opportunity to leave the room um, because your shit's about to get real. Part one is a preamble. I have been involved in many open source communities and various online communities uh, for a number of years. Um, some of those communities are communities that I'm very proud to have been a part of. Uh, such as the Monom community, which is where I, I learned music, a lot of what I know in electronic music, and in a way gave me uh, the career that I have now. The first Node repo I ever wrote was uh, modifying Node OSC, which is open sound control, which is the protocol that the Monom uses to communicate with music software. Um, I kind of owe my whole technical career to this community, and it was phenomenal. Um, another community that I was really proud to be a part of was my last job at uh, Famous Industries, where we worked on an open source framework for doing animation in the browser. You may remember it, you may not, that's all good. But um, some communities that I've been involved in over time, I'm getting less and less interested in being involved in them for a variety of reasons. So what makes me feel this way about these communities? The issue is that I care too much. When I started off in open source, I was filled with wonder, bright-eyed, excited about everything. You know, you'd go on slash r slash programming and you're just so excited about all the people who are excited about the same thing that you're excited about. Um, everything's amazing. There's so many amazing projects and there's so many amazing people and it's really easy um, in that mode to just kind of feel like everything's awesome. I don't know if you've seen that amazing webcomic, I should have put it in here, where the guy's in a room and everything's on fire and he's just like, everything's okay. But there's a lot of hate. There's a lot of hate in these communities that isn't necessarily always obvious. So let's talk about some things that people hate. Um, People like to hate languages. They like to hate on people who use particular languages. You use JavaScript, I guess you're not a real programmer. You use Haskell, I guess you don't plan to ever work a job. There's lots of different comments that people may make to hate languages. People love to hate frameworks, whether it's Angular or React. If you're using something that they don't use, well, you're probably not very smart. People love to hate each other, almost more so than anything else. It's really quick and easy to start fights, to start bickering, to start being negative. People hate women online. And this is a really shitty and serious topic, and we'll get more into this afterwards, but misogyny is, is a real thing, and you see this happen in online communities a lot. And people also enjoy hating people from other minorities. Those can be underrepresented groups due to race, due to religion. It could be people who have disabilities. But in general, you tend to see a lot of hate towards people who are not the norm. Over time, it becomes harder and harder to ignore these patterns and the systemic problems that exist. I myself seem to just be getting kind of saltier and saltier every day. Um, I think I'm about two steps away from yelling at children on my lawn every morning. Not everyone is bad though. Like it sounds like I'm kind of frustrated with the whole internet, I'm not. In fact, there's a lot of really great people, but the problem is that th these great people get driven away from our communities by the people who hate. Some people like to pretend that it only matters what you contribute. A term that gets thrown around is meritocracy. 
you are as good as the contributions in which you bring into a community. If you write great code, that's all that matters. If you can help bring things forward, that you're a value to the project. If you show up on a random forum and suggest that maybe a project should introduce a code of conduct so that people feel safe to contribute, but you haven't contributed code, why should you be there? This is a really toxic viewpoint. There's tons and tons of ways to contribute to a successful project. A really great example, um, the creator of jQuery uh, last year at jQuery SF, um, John Rezig, gave a talk about why he thought jQuery was so successful. The number one reason was not the code, the number one reason was the documentation, the empathy, the ability to support users. Really good code does not necessarily mean success. Your code is made of people, and people matter, and you need to not forget that. So let's take a second, <laughs> let's look at a cute picture, let's get our spirits back up again. Oh. So let's talk about an unfortunate API. So back in November of last year, a thread was opened on fixing a message that was in the cluster API of Node.js. For context, the cluster API is a module that allows you to create and control and spawn various instances of a service. It allows you to handle routing. Um, it's essentially like if you use Elastic Beanstalk, it's a very similar way of doing load balancing, but it's built in internally to Node. There is syntax inside of of the cluster API, that you have a master and you have, you have the children, and if a child process dies, um, it has a flag that it can set called suicide, which sets whether or not the thread has killed itself. So during this code review of an update, um, a collaborator on the project mentioned that maybe the term suicide is not a very good idea for an API. Um, and I kind of responded to that pretty loudly, you know? It isn't a really good name for an API. We're responsible for the words that we choose and we're responsible for the way that they make people feel. So why do we want to include an API with a word like suicide? Um, Michael Rogers, who is you know, fairly well respected in the community, he works for the Linux Foundation as kind of the steward to the Node.js project, came up with a solution which was, hey, well how about we deprecate the use of suicide and shim it with an alternate name, it creates pretty much a zero surface area of breakage, um, and we undocument suicide as an API, but we won't break it for other people. So, inspired by that, I started a thread saying, hey, let's replace suicide as a verb. Um, one thing that I did here that I wanna point out that I've been doing in general a lot, with things that tend to be somewhat controversial, I've been trying to not take a stance. So if you read the language that I used there, I explicitly said, as discussed, and I say the discussion, and offered the question, what should we use instead? By offering questions for people to answer, I'm not making myself a target to people to attack. And this ended up being really interesting, as we'll see there was a lot of targeted attacks based around this thread, and I myself received very few of those. But as you can see, this thread kept going and going and going and going. And this is not including all of the issues that we had to moderate due to blatant racism or blatant misogyny. Um, it, it was pretty bad. It, images, like pretty much anything that you can imagine that could have gone in that would be negative made its way into that thread. And we eventually ended up having to lock it only to uh, contributors. So we started a discussion um, in the diversity working group at the time, now known as the inclusivity working group, of, hey, what are ways that we could maybe avoid this in the future? And this was just a thought experiment. The, we, we talked about this interesting tool called Alex that can actually analyze um, text and do sentiment analysis. And so we went through and we did that and we started seeing like, hey, what are like all the different words that are potentially problematic in here? And I think if I scroll down just a little bit, you know what, I'm not even gonna bother trying to find it because there's just, oh, here it is. Where I, I went through and I found, hey, like we went through and these are all the things that are coming up as flags in the code base and some of them are reasonable and some of them aren't. Some of them are like, don't use the word host. I mean, that's 
a bit of a bit off from what the term host is, but something like using the word stupid only in a comment isn't really necessary. Um, so we were able to use this to uncover a handful of things that we can improve. But this actually became an attack vector for people online who started getting really afraid. People who thought that we were trying to thought police. People who thought that we were trying to censor. It all kind of hit the fan when a user came into the thread and posted an emoji aubergine, which you can see right here is the lovely eggplant. At the time, we had a code of conduct in place, making it very clear what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable within the organization. But we had not done any work yet to make moderation guidelines to state, if someone is breaking the code of conduct, what will we do? How will we respond? And so we opened an issue on the TSC repo, which is the technical steering committee. And the issue pretty much just said, hey, you know, this user is derailing and is posting derogatory stuff. Um, maybe we should ban them. And we had some other stuff here as well. There was some stuff that people were copying and pasting directly from 4chan threads. And this just turned into another thread. And so far, everyone that you're seeing in here, as you can see, is a foundation member. These are all collaborators so far. And it's getting very heated in the discussion just internally about what to do. Because at a project, we hadn't yet come up with moderation guidelines. The entire ability for us to moderate and make the project a safe space for people was completely derailed by the need of discussion of how we should do it, what is appropriate. This thread ended up being a really big problem. Shit hit the fan. The thread got posted on 4chan. People started talking about how we're censoring it. Um, I think that we can maybe come in here and read a couple of the really hateful things. Um, are these people for fucking real? I know we should get rid of the concept entirely because some people like to live in a completely sheltered world where nothing that makes them uncomfortable is allowed and they need to grow up and to be wise, well-rounded human beings. People also started posting all sorts of emoji porn in the, in the threads. I can't even, I don't even know how people are so creative with eggplants. But pretty much everything that you can imagine that could be done was. Um, and this wasn't the only place where it ended up being posted. It ended up being posted on 8chan. I am not going to screen grab that, though. It ended up getting posted on Facebook. This was a really interesting one. This was a hackathon hackers group to talk about it. And some of the comments in here are just ridiculous. Um, my eyes are bad, so I'm going to lift this up. So like, simply because the word may have a different meaning that is considered bad in a certain context, it should be replaced. Does that mean that violent video games should be replaced as well? An insignificant nitpick of an insignificant code base, nothing to see here. Terms like suicide, kill, death, orphans, zombies are all heavily entwined in processors and OS terminology. For better or worse, renaming words will confuse so many peeps. This was a really interesting argument. Node, if you are not aware of it, is heavily, heavily, heavily entwined in Unix philosophy. From streams to processes to a lot of the architecture within Node, a lot is based on Unix. So a really great argument to derail something and say, hey, we shouldn't change is, oh, well, Unix did it. After doing a bit of research, though, it turned out, yes, Unix does use terms like kill. But no, the word suicide never appeared once in Unix. Further, a look across major GitHub repos showed that the term suicide wasn't really used at all in any software project. So this, uh, this creates a really interesting question. If we, the maintainers of Node, have an API that is potentially harmful, is it our responsibility to get rid of it? Because in 10 years from now, when someone's doing something that's Node-inspired and they base it on our API, the argument that's being used for already toxic words can be used once again for stuff that we have control of. And even further, what always confused me is how can people argue against this? It got posted on Hacker News, and you can imagine how the response was there. It got posted on Kotaku in Action, which tended to be one of the most 
hateful forms. If you're not aware of Kotaku in action, it's part of the Gamergate Brigade, and I'm not going to give them the pleasure of saying anything more about them. The most scary thing about all of this to me, and this was new to me when I experienced this situation, was seeing a consistent pattern of the ideas of men being attacked. While alternatively, people attacked women who had ideas. There were multiple women from our community, who I'm, I'm not going to name out of respect, but people who are friends of mine, people who have been contributing to the project for many years, who quickly people would go through their GitHub and their Twitter, and the first thing they would try to do would be to try to prove that these individuals are not real programmers. A little tip for all of you. If you ever start a debate by trying to debase or tear down the person that you're arguing with, rather than supporting your argument with facts, you're a shithead. There were various targeted harassment campaigns against women in our community who spoke up. From people on Twitter consistently sending aubergines, to emails, to we had one person actually open a um, code of conduct violation um, thread against a member of our community um, as they were offended by a joke project repo that they had on their personal GitHub. Um, this went all the way to people's employers who were being contacted by these trolls to try to get people fired. And consistently every single one of these people who were being harassed were women or people who identified as women. This shit is really scary. Why do people react like this? I have a lot of theories. Um, the number one thing that I saw consistently, especially in people who I generally thought were level-headed individuals, was fear. Fear of being oppressed, fear of being silenced, fear mostly of being excommunicated. One thing you'll hear many people being afraid of is, well, what happens when I'm the one making the joke at the wrong time? and I have a brigade of people coming and fighting against me. Um, there was a conference, I think it was PyCon a couple years back, and an event known as Donglegate. Um, that was an extremely unfortunate situation where everyone involved got fired pretty much, and nothing was solved, and no one was helped, and no one felt safe. Things like this make people really afraid of anything that could potentially moderate them. Um, we saw recently, if any of you were following the code of conduct thread in the Ruby community, that was extremely toxic. People were extremely afraid of what would happen. Matt's went on the record at first as saying, hey, you know, our community is all made of friends. We're all friends here. I don't see why we should have to moderate anything that doesn't involve the police. That's pretty darn toxic in my opinion. I, I think that there is a culture and language difference and I don't, I have no ill feelings towards Matt. Mats, but that thread devolved into people pretending to be Coraline, the person who started that thread, and posting Nazi propaganda. And meanwhile, the very thing that could help monitor that thread is the thing that's being argued against. And I don't know how people expect anyone to want to get involved in these communities. So we started a, a thread to discuss concerns about potential intolerance as a result of political correctness. And I'm not going to get too much into it right now. But the term political correctness itself and the term social justice warrior, both of those are constructs. Neither of them exist. Political, correct, political correctness was originally created as a way to derail conversations. I'm not going to get into that, although I am thinking about doing a talk all about the history of that term. But if you go through this thread, you can start seeing all the people who are talking about reasons why we shouldn't be monitoring people, reasons why we shouldn't be deleting stuff, it got to the point where one user who we ended up having to ban from the repo was posting large tirades with racist epitaphs simply to have them moderated so that he could screen cap it and claim censorship. Freedom of speech exists, but it doesn't exist in a GitHub, GitHub repo where people are trying to do work. If you're derailing the conversation, your comments will be deleted. And for some reason, a lot of people tend to think that they have something to gain or there's some sort of political, I, I can't even get into it. They think there's some sort of conspiracy and it just kept going on and on and on. And it was just terrible. So 
in looking at this situation, there's things that we did that were right. We had a code of conduct when we got started. So we had some pretty clear guidelines to begin with as to what we could do. We had a working group that had started before called the Diversity Working Group. This event pretty much reignited it, and there's a really interesting history of what happened that's being put online if you're interested in learning more. But we had a network of people in place already who were not the average co collaborators, who were not the average person who was involved, who was able to give us a really great alternate look at what was going on. We also had people who really cared. Whether or not we were doing it properly or efficiently is secondary to the fact that as a whole, almost everyone on the project cared about the project being successful and cared about people not getting harassed. But what did we do wrong? Because there was a lot of things that we did, that we did wrong this time. The first thing that we did wrong is we didn't have a clear moderation policy. We didn't have anything set in stone of, hey, if someone types something or someone puts in something bad or someone's being racist, how do we respond to that? Now, it may be easy to just delete something, but one thing that you have to keep in mind, trolls get fed fire. If you delete a post from a troll, that troll is going to post 10 more posts. We saw a lot of um, throwaway user accounts being created on GitHub on the same day just to derail conversation, just to get people riled up. What ends up happening is that these trolls who manage to get people riled up, get people who otherwise would not be trolls to start drinking the Kool-Aid, they get fired, they get angry, and it just turns everything into a hate war. It's really, really terrible. Another thing that we did wrong was we didn't necessarily take things as seriously as we could as a project. It's not to say that we need to group think as a project and everyone in the project needs to agree with each other, but there were some comments that were made by people from the project and from collaborators that were a little tongue in cheek that makes it seem like we as a project don't take this seriously. If we as a project don't act together and don't take this seriously, we can't expect other people to take us seriously. And even further, this consistently was a kernel that was used by trolls to tear us apart even further. And there was some pretty terrible infighting that started happening due to all of this, due to the pressure, due to the, like, the large number of threads. It's hard to even imagine waking up in the morning to 200 emails filled with hate. So why does a code of conduct matter? A code of conduct matters because it makes it extremely clear to you and your collaborators what is appropriate and what is inappropriate. It doesn't mean that the code of conduct outlines that we're going to thought police. It doesn't mean that you're going to start banning on mass. All the code of conduct does is outline what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Why is a code of conduct useless without moderation guidelines? If you do not have clear moderation guidelines set in place, you will spend weeks, months, all of your time bike shitting over how you should moderate. And that is what happened in this situation. In this situation where we had people posting threats, we had people posting everything you could imagine, we're sitting there in another thread arguing about whether or not we should do anything. And if you think the trolls didn't notice that, they did. And you go into the 4chan uh, threads and the 8chan threads and the Kotaku in action threads, and they're making fun of us. They're making fun of us for not having our stuff together. They're saying, look at them arguing in a repo about whether or not to ban someone for an emoji. And then they build on that to say, oh my god, the social justice warriors are winning. This is the fire that people need to attack you. Everything that you do as a project to not be on the same page and not be work working together is going to be an attack vector. Another cuteness break. <laughs> I feel better now. So where do we go from here? Um, I don't really have an answer to that. Um, but I do have some things that I've been thinking about. This is really upsetting, and it's burning a lot of people out. Be aware of that. Don't give in to groupthink. It's extremely easy when you're in a large thread with lots of people with lots of opinions who are upset and on fire for you to start thinking the same way and start chiming in. You know what? A lot of the times, your opinion doesn't need to be in there. And I don't mean that to say that your opinion doesn't matter, but more so that when people just consistently jump into a thread and throw their opinions in, all that it does is 
consistently derail and get us further and further from reaching an actual conclusion. Don't give in to fear. There may be things that you're afraid of. So for example, as I was talking about with the Code of Conduct and Moderation Guidelines, a really big fear that people have is, I'll be at a conference, I'll be sitting in the front, I will be on the wrong website and open a tab and the wrong tab's open and all of a sudden I'm banned from ever going to any conference in the city ever again. Moderation guidelines are there to protect everyone. One of the biggest fears that people have is that when one of these events happen, that there will be a tide of people on Twitter and, and social media piling on and attacking. The reality is that a code of conduct and moderation guidelines protect everyone. It is clearly stated in the code of conduct that your conduct in social media, when it has to do with the project, is also part of the code of conduct, if that's in there, which is in the note conduct, code of conduct. It makes it very clear that you have nothing to fear of brigades coming to attack you if you make a mistake. People make mistakes. I make mistakes. What you do is you apologize, you learn, and you move on. And people do forgive. In almost every single instance that I can think of where someone has been attacked by a large group, what has caused the real problems for them have been their reactions to that and them getting deeper and deeper into a problem. The number one thing that you can do if you cause a problem is disengage. If you don't engage, it won't blow up. Call out people for being terrible. Don't be afraid to say stuff. I know for a fact that this is really, really scary. Um, when the code of conduct thread and all this stuff was going live, I had my picture posted in multiple 4chan threads or in Reddit threads where people were making fun of me. I know that I have my resume on my GitHub. I know that pretty much anyone in one of those threads who saw my picture and saw my handle was probably three or four steps away from doxing me, from potentially knowing where I live. But you can't let that fear control you from doing the right thing. Hold your leaders accountable. It's not only the contributors who are accountable for their actions, it's the leaders of the project. If you're part of a project and you see that the leaders are not acting in a way that you find to be acceptable, disengage from toxic projects. If you don't see a problem with, with things, go ahead and work with the status quo. But the only way that we're really going to make a difference is if we band together and work on projects that have clear guidelines and clear structures to make safe spaces for people. Don't burn yourself out, which is advice that I can probably listen to. I'm pretty much consistently in a state of burnout the last four months after all of this. But, you know, sometimes it's really helpful to just walk away from this and remember that it's not everything even if it can really feel like it. And don't forget, your code is made of people. That's why we do that. We do this so that people can be empowered. We do this so that we can work with people. We're doing this, generally, I'm imagining, to make the world a better place. So if we're all working together for people, then remember that it's not just all about the code. It's about the people who write the code, the people who read the code, and the people who use the code. Thank you.